What's poppin'? It's your boy Moses, aka No More Chillin' right here in the Lit Out Podcast with my very special co-host, Mr. Def Jeff. In the building, you feel me? AKA No Mo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, if you just watched our my story promo, uh, our story promo on the Lit Out page, uh, he tried to do my intro and fucked it up a little bit. You know and the best part was he told me five seconds before we filmed it. Tell me exactly what to say. Oh, the other day uh, at work, funny side story. Uh, one of my homies from high school came up, and then I was chopping it up with him, and one of my coworkers, she was like, is that the guy you do your podcast with? I was like, nah, it's just another fat Mexican dude. <laughs> from now on, Jeff, anytime they see Jeff with a fat Mexican next to him, he goes, is that the guy from the That's podcast? The podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fat Outlet Podcast. We're not all fat, but we are all Mexican. <laughs> Yeah, shout and out I can't grow four inches. Fuck you. <laughs> Is that what you're taking from the last podcast? <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Speaking of the last podcast, man, so many things. Like, I want to, especially the people who are, like, actually listening to us and watching us and stuff like that, a couple things that I made a couple mistakes. Yes, the podcast was, was blurry. That's my fault. Some of the podcast sound wasn't great. That's my fault. Jeff has nothing to do with that. Jeff is doing a great job. Yeah. So Jeff wanted to let you know in front of everybody that it was my fault, okay? I fucked up. But we just ordered a bunch of new equipment that's going to make this podcast super more like, el- like just easier to watch and just easier to enjoy. More produced. Uh, yeah, highly produced. We're getting, we're getting, we're we're leveling up. Uh, we're seeing the the outpour of support that we're getting from everybody. So we're like, fuck it, let's invest some more money into this shit. You feel we me? We appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. all the love. Shout out to the Ballast Point staff. I love y'all. Fuck with y'all heavy. Squad. You know what I'm saying? Um, another thing too, the last podcast was meant to be, uh, you had to wear sunglasses to wear that one. So, you know, make sure you wear your sunglasses. It's for like that. the new 3D. Yeah. SD, sunglass dimension. Sunglass, SGD. 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 <laughs> Is that a new thing? Fuck it, let's go with you it. just made it. Uh, Jeff, how was your weekend? Any, anything crazy? How was your weekend? You know you work on the weekend, so like how was your week in between weekends? Because I think like your week in between weekends is like your weekend, right? Yeah, I don't do shit. On my days off. My days off are like during the week, but I really don't do shit. I just fucking, I always say I'm going to do something, fucking rearrange my room and clean my room and do all this shit. And I just fucking take random trips to Target after I go to the gym and then go to a bar and get some beer and some wings and shit and just fucking lay low for a while. I don't really do too much shit. So other than that, it's cool. Like I try to like go out there and do some shit. It's fucking hot. It's fucking hot in here. Hell yeah. But yeah, nothing crazy. What about you? Um... The last thing, last exciting thing I did was I took my son to Top Golf. Me and the homie Walter, homie Wally, shout out to Wally from Bellflower, went to Top Golf, the new Top Golf in El Segundo. Fucking dope. So wasn't there only one in Vegas before? There used to be only one in Vegas, then Arizona, and then they did it Ontario, and then it came over here to. But you know, it's I. Right. The one in Vegas, I mean, I just, I'm just a, I'm such a snob. The one in Vegas is way better. Yeah. Like it has like seventy foot TV, seventy foot. Like just huge, seven hundred feet TVs out in the, out in the open. You can watch seven hundred because that's a fucking big difference. Man, it looks like seven hundred. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it's just you're hitting balls and you're watching like seventeen games at once, and like there's like layers, to, like levels to the shit. It's usually three levels. I think I think Vegas might have four. There's a pool in there. There's a club in there, and each level has a bar. That's fucking sick. I don't want to hear no so go each level has a bar too. Do you get to like pick what level you go to or do you pay to get to a higher level or uh typically if you're like a real golfer, you want to be on the floor level because that's real golf. And then if you're just there to fuck around and get points, you want to be at the top. That'd be me. I just be up there. <laughs> just one point. I don't fucking know how to golf at all. <laughs> it's really hard. As a baseball player, right? Like what I do is swing fucking swing sticks and golf is a completely different sport, dude. Yeah, let's see. I'm glad you admitted that baseball's so hard and all you do is swing sticks. So difficult, dude. Baseball's the number one sport in the world. So difficult. Anyways, um, shout out to the homie. Um, dude, the homie from... I'm going to shout out the brand. Shout out to Original Homies for the shirt. I met him at a Aguas Locas pop-up. Uh, super cool guy. He runs this like um, brand with his wife. Uh, they make really cool shirts. I want to give him a shout out. Original Homies. Follow them on Instagram. Uh, you might see him here maybe a couple in a couple weeks, and we're going to interview him and talk about his story and shit. Hell yeah. And shout out Aguas Locas. Yeah, out here making a community. You know what I'm saying? A full moonity. Bro, they let the comment the other day, like, damn, this shit got 10,000 views. Like, they were hyped about that shit. I was like, bro, you should see. It got 10,000 views on Instagram and 5,000 on TikTok. It's getting up there. Facts. But yeah, shout out Costco, though, for bringing back Terramana. Bro, I definitely want to get into the Costco thing. They didn't have Terramana for a minute, and fuck you, Vince. It's probably <laughs> your fault somehow. Yeah, blame Vince. But also, thanks for bringing it back. If you're ever in the Costco in Lakewood, 
by the uh, what mall is that? Lakewood Center Mall. Yeah, Lakewood Mall. Um, and you see a guy with a ponytail, and, and right now he's in the, in the vegetable produce area. That's his thing right now. Because he's a vegetable, <laughs> fucking retard. <laughs> Uh, you see a guy with a ponytail just like creep up behind him, just yank his shit down to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Until a mo told me to do that to you, you bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> just get a bunch of people to go jump Vince. <laughs> nah, shout out to Vince. He's a, he's a <laughs> cool guy, cool homie. Kill his ass. I was telling him, like, you know how he's like coaching uh, high school and then Mono's coaching high school? Mm-hmm. We should do like, uh, what is that show called on, on NFL? Uh, Hard Knocks? Do a hard knocks. We should do a shit. hard knocks, like his school versus Mondo's school, and then like you're on one sideline, I'm on the other sideline. Well, they just hard. had a like a little group practice or whatever. A between seven the on teams. seven, but we didn't have enough time to like produce and think about it. But like, yeah, even when football season starts, I'm down to do some sideline reporting, dude. Yeah, that'd be sick. I don't know if our content is high school. At least my at least my mouth is very <laughs> high school. We we'll just blur out all the kids and their logos. Like, who knows? Yeah. What high school <laughs> guys. Yeah. Bro, I'm banned from high schools anyway. Bro, so. that should be tough. But you were there at the last time. You were there at the last the event they had. What? Oh, you went to Vince's. Uh, they had like a little. Oh yeah, well we had. I played. We had an alumni game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you actually played it. in the game. I'm still sore. Yeah. Like with pads and everything. No, no, it was like just two hand touch type shit. How much just, playing time do you get? Not nah, good amount. Like sometimes play a little bit, and then you sub out with other people, and then you go back in and play again. It was fun though. It was a good time. Saw did some you, people I ain't seen in a minute. Did you guys have like any famous alumni? No. Nah. Yeah, because nah. you guys suck. Nah. And if um, we did, they just they didn't come there. So, like, as far as Costco goes, like, Costco, sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. And then the reason, sometimes why I hate it is it's my fault. I just go on the wrong days. You don't want to be in Costco at 7 in the morning. I mean, at 10 in the morning on Saturday or Sunday. Fuck That's that. the wrong time to go. That's terrible. Technically, any day. You don't want to be in, in, in a Costco with the people who get there when it opens. You want to get there right before it closes or like in the middle of the day? Wait in line for a grocery store or some sort of fucking store like that. You're a fucking shitty person. You suck. Like that's the the point. That's the highlight of your day. Yeah, it's going to be there. Fucking loser. (laughs) Figure something else out. Jesus Christ. But Costco be hitting hitting sometimes, bro. Like the Terramina. Terramina, which is a tequila that The Rock makes. You get like a, I think it's a 1.75 or is it a regular... I'm not sure. I think it's regular. It it's might like, be 1.75, but it's only 22 bucks. Bro, you can't go wrong with that. And it's good tequila. Yeah, I was pissed off when I didn't have it for a while. Some fucking bro, shortage. I went the other day and I was circling around the wine, circling around the tequila, looking. They even moved it over to have their own aisle now. And like, no Terramana. And I was like, what the fuck? I was fucking panicking when I went too. And I'm glad we had that same experience. And I was like, <laughs> where the fuck is it? And it's like one of the, like the second or third time I take my girl with me to Costco and she goes, are you? Are you okay? Like they don't have the Terramana. <laughs> fucking Terramana. You fucking I'm alcoholic. Tear this bitch up, <laughs> bro. So then I had to ask one of the workers. I don't want to Hey man, what's up with the Terramana? He goes, No, we're run out. There's no way. And he goes, Oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. We've been out of it for a couple of weeks. I'm like, How oh, the fuck are you out of it? And then Vince comes along, and then he just puts he puts his hands on his waist. And he goes, There's no way we're out of Terramana. Are you fucking kidding me? God damn it. Yeah, he tried to put his foot down. Yeah, the Rock tried to pull a fucking. Like a the rock move where he left wrestling for a little bit and came back. He fucking took his tequila off for a little bit, brought the demand and then dropped it again. They were like, Oh shit. It's like right when you walk in and you finally see it, you're like, if you smell, you're like, fuck, they got Terramana. <laughs> I'm man, you never know. I am a complete conspiracy conspiracy theorist. I think they do that shit on purpose. Probably. Just to fucking make us fiend. That's probably why they put fucking instructions in pillows. Also, yeah, fuck you, Costco. Why do you have instructions for pillows? I bought pillows the other day over there, like two new fucking queen size pillows because Yacht's queen. And I opened it and there was fucking instructions. I didn't even read the instructions. What I were was the so instructions? offended. Please I don't tell know. Me. I don't know. It just said instructions and then I got pissed off and I just threw it away. I didn't even read them. You threw the pillow away? No, I threw the instructions away. I don't I mean, know what the fuck. It's like, do you not know how to pillow. use a pillow? Like, open what's... pillow, put pillow in pillowcase, lay on pillow, punch your boyfriend in the face because you sleep like a crazy bitch. Boyfriend wakes up, <laughs> plays run it by Chris Brown. Do with that what you must. And I was just like, who the fuck? And also, why the fuck do they have a popcorn button? Every, if you've noticed, every b- bag of popcorn you get says, do not, in full caps, do not use the popcorn button. What the fuck is the point of the popcorn button? Why can't I use it? I'm talking about microwaves. On oh, microwaves. It says there's always a popcorn button, and the popcorn always says do not use the popcorn button. What the fuck happens? Is that how the Ukraine war started? Does someone use the popcorn button? I think that I think someone in the middle of the uh, Chernobyl used a popcorn button. You know what it is? Uh, the same people who make 
microwaves made the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl, and someone was trying to make some popcorn. It sound like you're saying Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Chernobyl? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Chernobyl. <laughs> Lakewood. <laughs> shout out to Lakewood Unified School District. You guys did a way better job than, yeah. than LAUSD. That word. So like the whole meltdown that happened in. Say it again. What's it called? Chernobyl. Yeah, Cherno- Chernobyl. I gotta use my white people voice. Chernobyl. Chernobyl. You know what I'm saying that's probably how the meltdown happened. I think that's probably what happened. I don't think Bill Cosby used drugs. I just think he pressed the popcorn button and all those girls fell asleep. He just said, <laughs> <laughs> what about like in the, I just bought a fucking oven. Um, what about like the bake? Is what's, it Jewish? What's the difference between him <laughs> baking and broiling? <laughs> the spelling probably? Yeah, for sure. Well, don't you broil on the fucking what is? The I, don't, I just don't know what a broil is. And why do I need a button for it? Isn't it like the shit you do on the stove top or is that boil? Boiling is on top. But do you boil the broil? What's broil? I don't know. If anybody out there knows what broiling is, anybody out there know what the broiling is, put it in the comments. Let us know. If you know we have phones that we could Google it. I, I, yeah, I could, but I, half I'd time. rather you guys tell me. Yeah, what the fuck? So I just got. I just bought a. I just COVID. bought a fucking um, a oven, and now I have a fridge. So there's like seventy five percent less space in my kitchen. My kitchen starts from that gray line to that wall. Yeah, the oven and the fridge look like they're beefing right now. Just yeah. staring at each other. Yeah, like a little fucking down. UFC stare down. Oh, speaking about stare downs, uh, do you know who Anderson Silva is? No, who's that? Anderson uh, Pac? Anderson Pac's cousin with the last name Silva. They just switch names? Yeah. Yes, and I know. Anderson. Technically, they're know both Anderson same skin Silva. color, so it might be cousins. Oh, you're uh, racist. <laughs> you're of racist. course, I am racist. I don't care. Uh, Anderson Silva just had a... Um, I have the notes right here. Anderson, Anderson Silva... The spider, the the legendary uh, Hall of Fame spider. Oh, gee. Yep. He just had a weigh-in for his boxing match. He's boxing now? He's boxing now. Who's he fighting? Who fucking cares? There's a fucking nobody from Brazil. Very true. So tonight, he's going to throw on the gloves and, and have a boxing match. What do you feel about Anderson Silva's uh, boxing career? Probably just bored. Probably just fucking bored and wants something to do. And he's been fighting his whole life. So he's like, fuck it. I don't think he's going to go crazy with it. He probably just wants to fight again. But he knows... He's too old for the UFC and for MMA and stuff. He's, he's already paid his dues. He's a fucking legend. So he's probably just doing something just to dabble in it. To me, I remember him being like a lethal kicker in like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, right? So like using your feet, your shins. He was, was just so fluent. But was he ever like a, a ruthless like power puncher? Yeah. Kind, kind of. Yeah. I mean, he has that one fight. I forgot who it was where he was just ducking and dodging and then just went boom and knocked homie out. He was just fucking just so fluid. So to me, is this like to me, like he has his knuckles and his fingers that you could break your hand so easily in any fight. Yeah. Like he hasn't really fucked those up. Like he's fucked up his feet and his chin, his shins, chins. I have his chins. He has shins. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I feel like his hands are still good. He could throw them. But this is also a money grab. And I'm not mad at it. I don't think it's a money grab. I just think he just has a love for the sport of fighting. And, you know, when People you get up there him. in the 40-something years old, you don't really want to get kicked in the head and do full MMA or Muay Thai or anything. He's probably just it's the love of fighting, just wants to give something else a try. One time I was in Torrance uh, at a laser tag center off Sepulveda and Hawthorne, and it was me, my son, and it was the homegirls. The homegirl, that was my coworker at the time, it was her daughter's birthday party, so they had to decide the laser tag, right? So we went to the laser tag, we out have fun, and then I come outside to play in the arcade. I turn to my left, and who do I see? Joe Biden. Anderson Silva. Ah, oh, fuck. Close enough. Anderson Silva with his wife, two or three kids. Was his wife bad? <sighs> she wasn't horrible, I'll tell you that. Probably some. Now this is a thing. Baby. This is a thing about like oh, combat sports and being like an a fucking like legit violent warrior. Like, all right. Anderson Silva, we think about him as being one of the baddest man, baddest men on earth, right? He could he's lethal, he could kill somebody nicest person outside. But why is it always like the most lethal, violent people have the most square looking kids? Like his kids look like they could win the fucking spelling bee and the fucking algebra decathlon. Those jeans probably skipped them. They all had like glasses, a little nerdy, all weird. Those jeans probably skipped them. Or they probably come up in a not... He probably came up in a, you know, fighters and stuff to have that fucking killer instinct. You know, the rich trust fund kids aren't really the fucking fighters because you have to have that sort of edge to you so if your parents is one of the most fucking lethal people in the world they probably have a different upbringing with a bunch of love and yeah there's, shit like that there's a saying that like hard times make hard men hard men who make weak 
children. Weak children make hard times, and hard times make hard men. Like it's a and cycle. hard men make me hard. Is that the rest of the saying? <laughs> no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but like you know, like for example, like say say for that was a long ass saying. Who the fuck said that? There's literally a saying. Mike Tyson that says it. Joe Rogan says it. It's a long. Let me ass say it one more time. Hard men. No hard times. Like you war. You go to war. Up. You go to war. Is, is a hard is time. Part of the same. It is. <laughs> All of this is in context to it. Hard this times. Is the fucking Chinese letter tattoo you have on your back. Hard times make hard men. But hard men, because they went through the hard times, they don't want their kids to experience that shit, so they make it easy for them. So now you grow up and you raise these kids that are not on the same level as you, and they think shit's sweet, so then they make shit sweet. It's I don't a know. completely different saying <laughs> I'm lost. Anyways, I saw a fucking Anderson <laughs> Silva at a laser tag Long story center. short, don't use the fucking popcorn button. And I want to go say what's up to him, and he told me what's up. They're always like the nicest because I feel like super dope. Because they, they know that, that guy could have kill killed anybody. me, right? Yeah. Anderson Silva could have killed me. Legit, they, know they could just murder. He could have killed me, and nobody would have told him that he has like the lethal elbows. But uh, my homie Walter, shout out to Walter from Buffalo again. My homie Walter went to a Drew League game maybe a few months ago uh, before the season started. It was before. Uh, yeah, it must have been before the season started. Is it at a bank? Uh, what? You said the Drew League game. The Drew League. Uh, where Kobe played. Oh my. It's a, said the Drew League. It's a it's a league out here in LA that people play. Anyways. So the game was at St. John Bosco, and it was, I don't know who versus who, but Mookie Betts. You know who Mookie Betts is? It's one of the blackest names ever, but yeah. Mookie. <laughs> how, they still, how is that allowed? How is he allowed to be called Mookie? <laughs> Name, Mookie. 22. Mookie Betts. Shit. He's dope, though. I know Pookie. Yeah. <laughs> I never met Mookie. That's, that's a male Mookie. So the homie sees Mookie in the stands watching the basketball game, and then he has like a seven, eight-year-old son who's really into sports, Lakers, Dodgers. He goes, hey, go ask Mookie to sign your hat. So the, the little homie... Walter's son goes down and asks Mookie to sign his hat. And there's like, there's no line. No one knows Mookie's there. Mookie's all like, not right now. I'm watching the game. Come back later. So my son, my, my friend's son is heartbroken. He comes back, ba- basically like shedding a tear. It's a fucking villain, like a villain origin story like, right there. Fuck, I so fucking ever since Mookie. then, I'm like, I want the Dodgers to win. I want him to help us win. But like, low key, fuck nah, Mookie. Never mind. Fuck you, Mookie. Yeah, fuck you, Mookie. Yeah, fuck you use the popcorn shit. button. Don't Go back you. to fucking where the fuck you came from, you fucking bowler. Bitch ass motherfucker. I don't even give a fuck if you play for the Dodgers, homie. You fucking told the homie little the homie little homie Drew not he can't sign his hat. Fuck that. But guess what? Yeah. Montreal Willis, who was he was in the Clippers and came to the Lakers and then he went to Charlotte to play with LeBon, LeBon, uh Lamelo Ball. LaBamba. He was there and he signed little Andrew's hat. Shout out Montreal. So shout out to Montreal. Hell yeah. I'm rolling with Montreal. If you ever see him getting in a scuffle, I'm jumping in. Mookie, if I ever see him getting in a scuffle, I'm jumping in too, but I'm just joining to fuck him up. him. <laughs> Even though neither of those things will ever happen. Yeah, but fuck just in Mookie case. You're on alert, Mookie. I just wanted to say that. Uh, did you know that uh, Michael Vick is making a comeback? Yeah, I've never watched that league, that fan fucking run league or whatever like that. It seems kind of cool, though. T.O. is in it. Just imagine this. Imagine. Did they like pick the plays and shit? Imagine you're playing Madden, me versus you, but instead of like computer generated Real people. games, it's fans voting like on Twitter, like run a run a sweep to the left, throw a hell of Mary. That's fucking sick though. That's fucking dope. Let me it's, tell you. It's coming down to that game. What the fuck was that movie with Stone Cold and shit? Where they like they were like controlling them and they had to like kill each other. Fuck, what was the name of that movie? They were like ex cons and shit, and then they had to like fight for their fucking con out. Nah, never mind. Fuck it. I haven't seen it. But isn't that fucking dope? Like that, the whole, like think about it, like the Super Bowl's coming down to it. American Idol for football. It's fucking dope. Well, American Idol, you can't pick the song they sing. Yeah, but you pick who wins. You can just vote. You vote. Johnny Manziel's in the league. T.O.'s in the league. T.O.'s fucking killing it. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Dude, you know that Mike Vick is, uh, when he was like in the league, he ran like a 4-4, right? Yeah. You know what he ran like last week? Like a four five, a four seven. Yeah, is it's that good? Mike I, don't, I don't know about football. Is that good? A four seven? Is that good? Fuck yeah! Especially at fucking forty something years old. Forty one. Yeah, he just got that killer dog instinct, you know. <laughs> oh, let me tell you about <laughs> killing dogs. He got that killer dog instinct hey, bro, in him. I've never had such a crazy like a uh, heat check or like uh like back in when I was like 14, 15, 16, I was doing stupid shit in the streets, right? I was doing a bunch of dumb shit. Like the the what like snapped me into reality was like when Michael Vick went down. For fighting dogs, 
I swear to God to you, I was fighting dogs <laughs> the same time. You're a piece of and shit. And I didn't know. I didn't know that, that was wrong because in the hood, everybody has a pit bull. Yeah. And we fight them, but we would never ki- let them kill each other. We drew the line in there like, oh, your dog's, your oh, dog, your dog got, your dog got fucked up. All right, pull him off. I'll pull my dog off. I knew how to pull my dog off. But I was known to having the best fucking pit bull around here, right? Because my pit bull just had a big ass head and I was breeding them. Like pit bulls was just a thing. It was like Pokemon cards, but real life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Pokemon cards? That was, it was, that's just what it was. Yeah. And then I found out like, oh shit, you go to jail for this? <laughs> like he could lose. Never mind. Maybe we should your, love these dogs instead. <laughs> he could lose your contract for that. And then I started like opening up my eyes to like, oh shit, there's like, uh, sanctuaries for pit bulls and pit bulls are not that bad. I'm like, you know what? Uh, Michael Vick at that time was like my favorite player, even though I love he was on the opposite team that I don't like, you know, whatever. But like, I was like, all right, you know, I'm gonna stop fighting dogs. It's, yeah, it's remember, obviously not right. I remember when he went on the Eagles after he did his time and shit or whatever. And my mom was like, you're gonna still be an Eagles fan, you're gonna root for him. I'm like, hey, mom, he did his time. I don't agree with what he Bro, did, but that's Mike Vick, so, so good. Uh, and then the very first play of the fucking the. Week one, I think it was his first season, throws like a fucking 80 yard bomb to Deshaun Jackson. Yes, I was like, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, mom, I'm gonna yes. have to I'm forgive gonna have to him for this. this guy. Uh, he paid his dues. Uh, and yeah. you had you had the coach with, at the time, uh, the guy from the, Andy Reid. Yeah, you got Andy Reid. Yeah, that's why I was Deshaun like, we had Deshaun McCoy, Deshaun Jackson, yeah, you threw that fucking stacked. 80 yard bomb against the Washington Redskins. And I was like, Yeah, he, yeah, I don't agree with it, but he paid his dues. So, yeah, bro, better than fucking Kevin Cobb and shit. I'm gonna say a hot take right now, hot take. I think Michael Vick is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time because just because Tom Brady has more rings doesn't make him a better quarterback than, than uh, Michael Vick. Tom Brady had Bill Belichick, the front line, the receivers. He had the whole organization behind him. That doesn't make you the best quarterback. That makes you the best. You're part of one of the best teams and you're, excuse me, a good quarterback. But like, let's just talk about like athleticism, Michael Vick. Arm strength, Michael Vick. Lefty, Michael Vick. Like, he was just good. He just was never part of, like, a championship fucking franchise. Well, I would, wouldn't say – I'd say Tom Brady's a better quarterback. But as far as influence to the game, it's kind of like Vic is – was to, like, the NFL what, like, Steph Curry is to the NBA right now. Like, Vic just – he changed the fucking game because he came in just electrifying as fuck. Now it's, like – it's how, just how Steph Curry changed the game with fucking deep threes and now people are shooting full court shots. Is Are people going to put Steph Curry up there with Jordan and LeBron? No. Some people, some people but, will. No, nah, they, but they'll be wrong. Will they, will they put him up there with like Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe? No. But is he going to be one of the most influential players of all time? Yes. Is anyone going to put Vic up there with Tom Brady and the Peyton Mannings and the Joe Montanas? I no. Do. I do. But I do. is he is he one of the most influential players of all time? Yes. This this is where it goes like my football knowledge comes into play because football is not my number one sport. I would say it's my third sport, right? So I don't know as much as you do. But football has on the field at all times 11 players in each side or 12? 11. Okay. Basketball and baseball has nine players at each at each side. Basketball has five. When we're, now, we're leaving now golf and fucking other sports where it's just one-on-one. Individual sports. But... A basketball player that a basketball team that has five people and then one guy can really influence the fucking outcome of the game, that's easy. A baseball, if you're not pitching and you're only batting, it's in even if you're the best defensive player of all time, it's hard to in, really influence the game. Yeah. Football even worse. You gotta have a good D line. You gotta have a good O line, a linebacker crew, a special teams. Like it is just one of the most difficult sports to be like an individual athlete. But when it comes down to quarterbacking. Bro, I feel like I'm a big conspiracy th- conspiracy theorist. If they would have never arrested Michael Vick and just let him progress against his fucking career, that guy would have at least two, two, two fucking rings under his belt. At least two. Maybe not up to seven with Tom Brady, but in my heart, Michael Vick is the greatest quarterback of all time. Interesting take. He was a fucking terrible take, but it just cheat code Madden. Well, yeah, Madden. That shit was not fair at all. I'll get so pissed off when you play against somebody and like and they pick the Falcons. They're a fucking Bengals fan, and they're like, "I'm gonna be the Falcon." Fuck you, bitch. You can't do that. Shit. I, will, I will play games like you can't pick. Okay, we're, let's do this fair. Like pick anybody except the Falcons. Yeah, you can't be the 04, 04 Vic. It was probably yeah the biggest cheat code of any fucking sport game. Probably oh, you can hike the ball, run shit. like thirty five yards in the that big U, and just fucking take fair. Off. Dude, that shit was so retarded. But I've done it. I've done it. Uh, I did it too, I've but I would just get mad when other people did it. When yeah. I did it, it was all right. When other people did it, it was back like, in those days, you're a Raider fan. Back in those days, you couldn't really like go online because our internet was too slow. But like, 
fuck, dude. Yeah, when the homies came over and you played, and they just went straight to fucking Atlanta. You're like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> you know I would love it. I would fucking love it. Mike Vick, 600 rushing yards and shit, and two passing yards. 75 to 10. <laughs> yeah. I would love it when the homies come over and they don't know nothing about football, because I've always been into all sports, and they would know nothing about football. Let's play Madden. I would just check them. Hey, you want to play this game called Madden? I'm like, you know, it'd be fun. And I'm just smoking them. It's like, yeah, you should be the Browns. They're really good. I'm going to be the Falcons. They're okay. Yeah, bro. But Michael, to me, Michael Vick is like the best quarterback of all time. For sure. Definitely one of the most influential players. Give me uh, your fast food top three. In and out. What, what's your in and out order? Uh, Go to one is probably the double double whole grilled onion, chopped chilies, animal fries with chopped chilies. And then the drink varies. Maybe Dr. Pepper, maybe a little pink lemonade, maybe a little Coke, depending on how I feel. But that's, that's my go to. <laughs> All right, well, top three. What's the next? What's the next? Fuck. In and out. Wendy's. Especially since they brought back them spicy nugs. Bro, Wendy's slaps. Them spicy nugs. Underrated. They just opened a brand new Wendy's right here. <laughs> Mexicans haven't figured out Wendy's yet. Wendy's is delicious. So, like, there's a Wendy's and then there's a McDonald's. They're not that expensive. There's a McDonald's right next to it. And the McDonald's always has a line, or like a Chick fil A line. Mexicans love McDonald's. Chick fil A is good. I think it's kind of overrated. McDonald's, Mexicans love McDonald's. So, that McDonald's always has a line around it, right? And my son loves it too. So, let's go to McDonald's. I'm like, no, you know what? It's a long line. Let's go to, let's go to Wendy's. They got good shit. Go to the fucking Wendy's, eh? Bro, fire. Spicy Wendy's. nuggets are regular. You want a frosty, bomb. Dip burger. the fries in the frosty. And then I could tell that like they're like the 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 utensils or the machines they're using are brand new because everything tastes fresh. They got square burgers, dog. Square burgers. They got square it. burgers. They I use the popcorn button on the square burgers. So you said in and out. In and out, Wendy's. Wendy's. You're not going to McDonald's? I was gonna say McDonald's, but I'm trying to think. Yeah. I'd probably go to McDonald's. I was either thinking that. Or like Taco Bell or something, but Jack in the Box, you're not Jack in the Box kind of guy. Jack in the Box is cool, but I probably go with McDonald's just because it's tried and true. I would say Taco Bell, but that shit always tears my asshole apart. You know, people always say that, but it, it never it never does it to me. Well, look at you, you're right. <laughs> 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 you use hot sauce. You, do you eat their hot sauce? Yeah, the fire. Yeah, sauce. Yeah, that's what it is. I never eat their hot sauce. Uh, it's straight vinegar. It's probably it's straight vinegar. It's probably and that like and fake, the food itself. It's fake like chili and vinegar. Like vinegar will cut straight through you. Mm. I mean, think about that. Yeah, probably so also. I never use too. a hot sauce. I never use. What's I just, yours? I eat that shit. So, um, damn, number one. Back in the day, I would say Jack in the Box, but yeah, Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box is solid. I just want to put it. Over I would probably go in and out now as as I got older. Like that shit's fucking fire. And then, damn, fast food. I'm gonna go in and out. McDonald's, Raising Cane's is an honorable mention. Uh, I hate Radies and Canes. What? The chicken tenders trash. The sauce. Sauce is great. The sauce is fire. The chicken is good. Everything else is whack. It's just basic. Like, it's not great. So I'll go in and out uh, McDonald's, and then it's a tie between Taco Bell or Burger King. Ew. Burger King, I think, still has, like, the last legit grilled burger. Like, they actually put that shit in the grill. It might be for five seconds, but. I do like their chicken sandwich. Like, their original chicken sandwich. Like, the long fucking chicken sandwich. The thing. little, little, like, yeah. it's like, like a big. That was pretty fire. Yeah, that's I like what I go that. with. You're not going Subway, dude? You know what? Back in the day, Subway was like my go-to when I was trying to be skinny. And then I found out that all their food is just plastic. You found out fucking Jared <laughs> rapes children. <laughs> and that guy rapes children. Like, Fuck, we were I all can't. bamboozled. We're they all got bamboozled. us. bamboozled. They got us, bro. At least he helped us lose weight. So it's okay. Free Jared. Speaking about like jail, did you know that R. Kelly is best for... You know, R. Kelly's in jail, in prison right now, right? What? And then what do you do? Um, apparently, supposedly, he just sang so great that it was a crime. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I believe it. I don't know how to hog that. Why would I hog that? Oh, you know what I want to do? Even though it might I'm get like, me, man. I want to get. De- it's probably gonna get demonetized and like we're gonna get a strike against YouTube. But like, I want me and you to sit down and watch uh, "Trap in the Closet" part one to part fifty. That shit is hilarious. And just react to it. That shit is great. The midget, should, are you down for that? Everyone has AIDS. Are you down for that? Fuck yeah. Yeah, we should do that. I know there's like a hundred chapters, but like maybe the first twelve. Have you seen all of them? I, uh, you know what? Back when they came out, I've probably seen like the first ten. Oh, uh, there's thirty two. I've seen all of them, and it gets ridiculous. The whole thing's ridiculous, <laughs> but it gets ridiculous after like ten to fifteen. But it's still like it's one. Of, it's like like a car crash. You're just like, I gotta see how this fucking turns out. Dumpster fire. And it's just so fucking sick that he wrote it all and he sang it all. And it's like, the man's a piece of shit. But goddamn, that man has some fucking the legend. Have you seen when like he goes to like Ghana or Africa and he's all like, do you have your passport? 
one? Nah. Do you have your pack? Or, or has the he, one where he has that girl wipe his beard and shit. He has another song that goes, Come to America. <laughs> Yeah. He's like literally recruiting bitches like on stage, bro. That man is wild as fuck. You know, speaking about bitches, because I know, uh, I know there's like a, a fe- yes, we, we really don't have that much of a female audience. Like I think I see the algorithm. No, no shit. <laughs> and it's like 90% men. <laughs> but those 10% of girls that just like stumble upon our shit and like, oh, these guys call, they're so misogynistic and they call bitches, bitches. Let me, when I say the word bitches, right? I want to explain myself real quick. The one time I'm ever going to explain myself is like. When I say bitches, I'm not talking about women as a as a sex. I am. Or like the female race or whatever. When I say bitches, I'm talking about bitches that leave comments like this. Okay, you ready for this? So this is a real comment from one of our posts that went viral on TikTok. So the homies are like, Man, women have men have sex with who they can and women have sex with who they want. But in the long run, men marry who they want and women and men and women marry who they can right that you was, almost made it through with that one that was that was you very controversial thank you for, thank you for, for noticing so then a bunch of guys agree that shit's viral has 1.7 million views on tiktok like three thousand comments you know crazy right and then there's like these just these girls are like obviously the girls we're not talking about past their prime and they're like you motherfuckers how are we gonna let these two fat fucks talk about this and that and like they just like oh I, i've been married three times and I, every time <laughs> before i married i said yes to those three guys i already said no to like six other ones and like we always have a choice we always have a choice like i'm talking those are the bitches i'm talking about <laughs> okay when i say you bitches i'm talking about the girls that like instead of like tortas yeah, well, I don't care if you're fat or skinny, just ugly in general. Trash pussy. Like, the girls that instead of, like, uh, doing what we do, which is, I think, the smart thing to do is buy, invest yourself in a $3,000 camera, uh, get some lights, some audio, learn how to record yourself, like, invest maybe six, seven, eight thousand $8,000 in yourself, record yeah. yourself, be funny, be entertaining, and then put your point out on social media. The, I'm talking to the bitches that instead of doing what we do, it's like they want to fucking repost a quote that they didn't even write. Like, those are the bitches I'm talking about. Those are bitches. And get a retard to help co-host the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Find your local retard. But yeah, also, in that whole sentiment right there, girls be like fucking, nah, since we're saying it, bitches be fucking, everyone, like, bitches just don't admit that their pussy's trash. Not everyone has, sometimes my dick is trash. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's trash. Like, you don't always have to have bomb dick or bomb pussy. Sometimes it's trash. Sometimes, I wouldn't know. Sometimes the dick's always bomb. Sometimes the pussy's always bomb. Bro, but like, like even, sometimes it, it's trash. So it's like a USB charger and a USSB. It just doesn't fit sometimes. You can have the biggest, longest dick in the world, but if the girl you're trying to know. fuck has like this really small, petite Pussy, it's not gonna work. She's gonna have more fun with a five or six inch kind of guy. And if the girl has a humongous, loose ass fucking <laughs> black hole pussy, then she's gonna need a 10 inch type of well, guy. I wasn't even thinking that. I was just saying, sometimes you're not fucking busting nut in 16 seconds, and then sometimes we're going for an hour. But don't sometimes you think? But always like, the dick's always the dick. Even though they like, they talk shit about like, oh, he busted in two minutes or he busted in 30 seconds, you know that's an ego boost for them. Like, I made this fool bust in 30 seconds. I don't know. Sometimes they get pissed off. I don't know. I feel like Maybe mad. there's nothing you to get complain them all riled about. Up. You get them all riled up and they're ready to go and finally get in and you're like, oh shit, here we go. And then you're done and they're like, what the fuck? I'm, and they're still horny. And then a fucking horny, uncummed girl is is dangerous. That's why you got to go with the, Hell the, no. the when West I'm done, Coast. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you got to go <laughs> with the West Coast. Mm. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. But like, I feel like, all right, look, say you had like, you've always been known as a guy, the Mandingo guy always has good dick. Like and then you put Can't it really. down. You put it down on a girl and you like smash those guys with the like amazing penis that always smash and like they don't nut. Like they're like, all right, fuck it. I didn't bust my nut, but I did my thing. Like there's gotta be a, some sort of correlation with that. You ever fake the nut? Oh, plenty of times. Yeah. And like girls think that we don't do that. Oh, we do. They do it way more, but we do it. Yeah, and they do it way more. But like yeah. I remember, I remember, I could remember all the times I've done it. Like oh, 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 I'm done, and I roll over and fall asleep. And then I'm sure like she must be like. There's, there's nothing there. What do you mean? You know, they're like, oh, you know, I jacked off before you got here. So yeah, like, it was like, because <laughs> the pussy's like trash. Not everybody has good pussy, just like not everybody has good dick, bro. Yeah. Let's let's just be honest. I got good pussy, girl. Let's be honest, bro. What is your drink of choice? Robitussin. 
That is clinically proven not to get you high. Yeah, well, off thing. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. One time, me and my boy, we like just got out of high school and we were trying to get on the lean train when all the lean was popping. So we couldn't get any prescription ones. So we went to Vons or some shit and bought Robitussin and just drank it straight up. We like split a bottle of Robitussin, just drank it straight up. We we're on our way to a party and we had to pull over. I think I was with Vince too. And he pulled over and we both just yacked our brains out in the fucking Lakewood High parking lot. Because we just drank a half a bottle of fucking cough syrup and we got the drowsy one. And I don't remember what happened after that. I think he I think I was just dropped me off at home. I'm fucked up right now. Yeah. We're idiots. But drink a choice. I think I think Probably they, tequila. Hold on, hold on. For the kids, this is this might be a PSA for the kids. They say like you have to drink like three bottles of Robotism to yourself to get the same effect as codeine. But before you even get to that point, you're gonna throw up. So there's no point. So try it out, kids. So don't, this PSA don't for the even kids. try it out. Go get three bottles of Robitussin. You heard it here first. Get three bottles of Robitussin. Drink them all and sell drugs to your friends. I remember back in the day when like rappers used to we used to rap about like smoking weed. Like that was a crazy thing to do. And we saw we saw always smoke weed when we were kids. But like now, drinking lean is a cool thing to do. Like nah, now it's perks and shit, bro. Lean or Lean's perks? Gone. Lean is it's literally phase pills or or liquid heroin. A lean face. It's pass. never been cool to just do heroin. I know it's fucked up, dude. I want to do heroin. That's just kind of whack. Well, that one dude, some new rapper dude, did it. He like made a song about addiction or some shit, and he did heroin for the first time live on uh, Instagram or something like that. His video was him doing heroin, shooting up heroin. And what happened? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I didn't give a fuck, but I was yeah. like, that's so. Stupid. But anyways, like do the regular drugs, like do some weed. But also, this is my first time, and you just happen to know how to do it and fucking have all. These first, we want to say that don't do drugs, but like if you had to do like the big three is like is like a uh, weed, alcohol, and maybe yeah, bro, don't, don't do drugs. There's a reason give why them to me instead. There's a reason why cocaine has been around since the '70s. But the thing is, right now with like coke or anything that's amazing. white, it's fentanyl. Like you got to be careful, yeah. test it, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. I think nowadays, people just trying to fuck up the fun. But anytime Are you trying to kill people, man. Anytime you go crazy, fun. like me, I would never do mushrooms. I would never do acid. I would never. Why the fuck not? I would never do heroin. Well, that's different than mushrooms and acid, but mushrooms and acid are fantastic. Because look, there's some like when when you do coke or like some other like coke or like drugs like that. Like there's some like old lady in like Guatemala cooking it for you, and I trust I trust her. I I, I can trust. Do her. you? I do. You ever seen cocaine cowboys? <laughs> I trust her. Do you trust these? But crazy like, bitches? but like it's, other drugs, it's not your regular grandma. That bitch crazy. I trust that bitch. But yeah, so off off topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. drink a choice. Probably. Yeah, yeah, go back to your choice. Probably tequila. I like tequila the most. Do you like the Blanco, the brown, the red? Does it matter to you? Just tequila in general? It depends. I like the Anejo, but I just like tequila in general. Tequila. If we're going like liquor, it's like, obviously I like beer. But if we're going tequila, then whiskey. Then after that, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah, I want to get into this. I want to get into the beer right now because you work at a brewery and you're like, well, you know, you're a smart guy when it comes to beer. (laughs) But before we get into that, uh, I want to get into this. I want to get into you. Whoa. (laughs) Gay. No. Press the popcorn button. See what (laughs) Only corn is going to pop. It's going to be your front nose, motherfucker. You're going to go to work with toothless right now. Uh, You're homophobic. Hell yeah. Fuck gay people. Don't even touch me. Um, So... (laughs) Look, when I was young, I thought it was super cool to drink Hennessy, so I should just drink Hennessy. Yeah, it's overrated as Or uh, Tennessee whiskey, which is Jack Daniels, or which was the other one I used to always want to drink? Or because I'm Mexican, Bucanas, right? So like brown liquor, brown liquor, brown liquor, brown liquor, brown liquor, which probably has the best taste because it's full of sugar, right? But then I will get too drunk and black out. I'm like, why am I getting drunk and black out? I'm like, what the fuck? Come to find out, it's the sugar that makes you brown and makes you black out. So... Clear alcohol is where you really want to be at. But I cannot do vodka. Vodka just tastes like shit to me. Yeah, vodka's whatever. I so, can't do straight shots of vodka. If you make like a vodka something, yeah. like a mixed drink, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's but all right. I, but I can't do straight vodka some either. juice or something. I've tried, not it too bad. I've tried it all. Go- yeah. Grey Goose, whatever. I can't do it. But, so I used to be like, oh, tequila, even though I'm Mexican, tequila don't, tequila don't go with me. Tequila don't go with me. But as I get fart. older, tequila is the right one. And then my perfect, my, my best one is like uh, the clear, the Blanco. Tequila. Just go clear tequila. Clear tequila. Make sure you drink before. Make sure you eat before. Uh, me and this guy shot a podcast that never aired because I lost the footage. I think I can still get it. And it's, it's somewhere in the cloud. But I updated my computer and it was lost. So hopefully I can re-get that, re, 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 re-get that fucking. Uh, you probably don't need that one. 
Yeah, we did probably we probably got too fucked up. But anyways, the point is what I'm telling you is that like we recorded that podcast and like all right, I get out of work at two, we recorded at three, you left like at eight. I'm like, all right, I got like four hours to sleep and go to work. I work up like eleven hours later because I was go to work. And I, then we ran through like two bottles that day, bro. We, Don Julio, we fucked up. That was all bad, crazy. You probably I, don't need to bring that one back. Probably I don't even know where some we're going outlandish to things. Um, Jeff, why do you think you're so unmaterialistic? What was it in your upbringing? Why, I'm a material why just girl. don't you care? Like, let's. You know what? Every every episode we'll do a drip check. Just drip. Let's I'm start lose that drip every time. It's not a competition, Jeff. I'm Everything just. Show me from from toes to to the top. Show me your drip right now. Well, first off, I'm a material girl. Material girl. I was an Um. So today <laughs> I was just thinking I'm just gonna dress for comfort. I got the the SpongeBob socks on. I got my slides. Got my little shorts and got my little dry fit that I got from Ross. Both of these shorts and this shirt. I don't know. I don't give. I've never gave a fuck about like dressing fly or being hella fly and shit like that. Because maybe just growing up, like I never really bought. Never really had like nice clothes and shit like that and it's not that like anything bad but it's just like i remember i would always go to like payless and get a bunch of my shoes but that was more or less because i would always fuck my shoes up because the school i went to had like black asphalt and shit so like my mom be like i'm not gonna buy you these nice shoes because you're gonna fuck them up playing all the time so i would just go to fucking payless and get like three pairs of fucking shack shoes but like different colors and try to rock them like the air force ones and shit but like i never been like a big material guy and shit like this fucking chain that i always wear it was my grandpa's and my grandma gave it to me that's a dope ass chain yeah it's like the nicest thing i ever owned and i would never probably pay for this chain like the price that it is because it's actually real fucking gold 18 karat gold don't tell people that nah it's real don't tell people they're gonna Anyways, what? What's wrong okay, look now. My thing is this: I have a little theory about you, but I haven't. I'm not gonna unveil my theory yet. But were your parents also super materialistic or unmaterialistic? No, they're unmaterialistic. They're never. Yeah, yeah they're never fucking. I think that's where it comes down to. Bad and bougies. We're all like, one day you're gonna be a dad. I'm a dad. I've been a dad for 11 years. My my son's about to be 12 in October, right? So I've been a dad for 11 years. So I'm like. In my head, I'm like, this is like a fucking uh, a science a science project. Like, I cummed in this girl, and then this baby popped out, and I just see it grow day to day. Like, and even if I hate school and science, like, I'm just attached to this thing that's always gonna be next to me. Yeah, no matter and what. I, no, no matter what. And then on top of that, like back in the day when you had Furbies or the Yamagachi <laughs> little the Yamagachi little like video games, or whatever, like, yeah. or Pokemon or whatever, like. This is not a, a fucking uh, Pokemon card. Like, this thing lives, and it's going to grow its mind of its own, and it just keeps look. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Let's play video games. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Take me to the park. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Take me to Vegas. Hey, it Dad. He looks just like you, too. And then he looks just like me, and yeah. then he's getting bigger and bigger. I'm like, oh, fuck. I can't even escape this thing. Like, So it's just like a, you know, it's a thing that just chases me as, as a father, right? So he is just like me he looks like me he wants to act like me even though I, I, I don't want him to so my thing is like your parents probably also didn't give a fuck about name brands nah they never did but also yeah as far as like name brand, like I always had cool shit like Pokemons and Playstations and all that shit but as far as like yeah like name brands they never really they never gave a fuck about that because they always had to deal with other shit and I was you know I had friends who did that a little bougie and shit like that but I don't know I never really gave a fuck so don't and never but like go. both of your parents didn't give a fuck or one gave a fuck more, more than the other no, nah, neither of them really gave a fuck. Yeah, see, my thing is this. My mom really gave a fuck about brands, but but my dad gave no fucks. But my grandma, love her to death, and her, all her family, and all them, very vain. As you could, like older yeah. Mexican ladies and shit, very yeah, vain. Yeah, yeah. You Louis have Vuitton. to wear gold rings. You have to wear Vuitton. gold. You need real gold shit. Real. You can't you wear fake get, shit. You need to get face, getting these facelifts at 70, 80 something years old. And you're like, Why? But that's just what they are. They they got that's they got it. some money. They get yeah. stuck in it. And my grandma has three sisters, so you know they kind of have a little beef here and there. Competition. Like a little, it's a dressing yeah, a competition, competition. Every party. So it's just yeah. I definitely noticed that. And then so my mom, not kind of because that's my that's my mom's mom. She doesn't really have that. My sister has her moments. She's a little bougie little bitch, but she gets those like bugle nails. You know, like the long, remember the chip bugles that you would put on your finger? <laughs> My sister like, gets her nails done I call like them that. Cardi B nails. Cardi yeah, B she gets nails. those bugle nails and then those fucking like long movie lashes. curtain eyelashes that like go above the brim of your hat and shit. And she I could do like, the nails, but the eyelashes, oh, I can't. Like bro. a fucking eyelashes. troll, like a gremlin, Taylor. Fucking don't feed you after midnight. <laughs> fucking little gremlin. Yeah. 
laugh. But yeah, maybe you you said your grandma was into like the whole old senor. They call senora look. You know, senor, well, my right? grandpa, my old grandpa school. too was a bro. Was, you never talked about a, your grandpa before. Talk about your grandpa. He was a bad boy. He was he was he was a wild boy. So he all old Mexicans. Biker and shit. Bad nah, he was white. My, oh, my, your mix. Your your grandpa was a white boy. Well, my a biker who my original smashed your grandma who was a Mexican. Well, lady. so my mom, my grandma has three kids. It's my mom and my two uncles. My grandpa, like my mom's dad, uh, she had him and my grandpa, uh, grandma had two kids. But then my actual grandpa that I've known my whole life, who is my grandpa, like the Blood, other guy, I don't bloodline. know him. Right, bloodline. He is. Uh, Go ahead, he bloodline. has. My other uncle, who's my godfather, so I was born and raised by him as my grandpa. And he's a white dude, but he was, he was a bad boy of like motorcycle gang and shit like that. And there's still things that I don't know about him from his past, but yeah, he was a wild boy. And so like he definitely like I don't know if he was material, but he's he liked to shine a little bit. He liked to rock some jewelry and rock. I'm some sure nice he was shit. he was driving a Harley. That's name oh, brand. 100. Yeah, he had his Harley. That's shit. name brand. Yeah, you know what it is? Name brand boy. is American as fuck. Yeah. Name brand is an American thing because in Mexico back in the day, in like little pueblos, the little third world country, there was no such thing as name brand. Like your grandma, or your mom would knit you a shirt or knit you a fucking, you know, like. But uh, the the name brand thing is an American thing. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like me and my brother are not very material. My brother's definitely not fucking material whatsoever. That dude like owns a house now out in like fucking Kern County where he has to oh, yeah. walk to the post office to get his mail and shit. He's fucking full hippie mode. Fucking doing his plants and shit. He's the farthest thing from material. But talking shit in the comments too. Fuck you, Jason. <laughs> hey, Jason's funny. Oh, Shut- Jason, you're funny, bro. Keep the comments coming. So you're saying you're the bro- funny one. You're br- <laughs> hey, we might- <laughs> I'm gonna have to replace this one with Jason. Jason's the one with the comments. So you're saying Jason's a little bit more of a hippie? Yeah. And you're in between? He's or always you- been like that. Or you side with him and like you're kind of like a low-key yogi hippie too? No. I mean, I have my moments and shit, but I'm just... Like, out of me, my brother, and my sister, I'm the greatest. And I'm just the favorite of everybody. In one way, in one way. Just being the greatest. Like, I'm the greatest. Like, he's no Alexander. I'm Alexander. He thinks he's the conqueror. I'm the conqueror. I'm Sonny Liston. Or whatever the fuck Mike Tyson I'm said. Jack Dempsey. Yeah, there we go. That's I'll shit. eat your children. Praise be to Allah. But nah, we're definitely like, it's cool. We're definitely very, very close. And that's kind of the cool thing, too, that my grandma likes between, like, the her other sisters and, like, my cousins and stuff like that. Like, they always get jealous about how close her grandkids are, like my grandma's grand, like me, my brother and sister, because all the other cousins and shit, the family beef and all this other shit, you know, all that crazy shit. But like, no matter what, like our family is, we're fucking close. We might be dysfunctional and all that shit, but it's always love. Like we always love the fuck out of each other, no matter what happens. And so, like, that's what I'm very appreciative of, and that's what I'm thankful for. But yeah, me and my brother and sister and, and mom and dad are all very close. Your grandma's still alive? Yeah. How old is she? Thank God. Fuck. I think she's been like 72 for the past 12 years. <laughs> she just ain't going over like that. Mid fuck. If I fuck this up and she hears it, she'll get mad. So I'm going to undershoot it and Shout say. Shout out to Grandma I'm Jeff. Gonna say like 72. I'm going to undershoot it. Bro, I can't it. wait to like. If I overshoot it and she hears this shit, she's, she's like, like, Mijo, what the I fuck? I think she's 20. Think she's like 27. Yeah, she's going to get mad as hell. <laughs> so I'm going to undershoot it. Bro, shout out to Grandma Jeff. I can't wait to do live shows and we bring her out on stage. Like, this is our 27 year old grandma. Oh, she's a wild girl. She's fun. She says, I feel like she's the one I, I, I got to interview next. You feel me? Nah, she won't know what to say. But yeah, so I think that too, like, as far as being materialistic, like, for some reason, dude, my mom, my mom has an addiction to shopping. Like, my mom's the type to, like, buy something, wear it, return it, get credit, plus credit on the next purchase, and then put it on credit, like a credit card, and then you get cash back. But then if you return it in time, it doesn't count against your count balance. So now you're up $700 when you only spend $3. I'm like, how did you learn all these scams? Like my mom- seems like a headache. My mom, yeah, I would never do that. I'm going to go to Ross. I would never do that. $20 pair of shoes. So like my mom will like stack up these points and we'll go to JC Penn and she goes, all right, Get whatever you want. So like I'll be like 13. Like, I want that South Pole shirt that I saw Nelly wore on BT South Underground. Pole. I want those fucking Sean John pants that I saw P. Diddy wore on the new Loon video. Okay. And I need Air Force Ones like that. She goes, Okay, that's three hundred dollars. That's fine. I have seven hundred points. We'll do this. I'm like, what the f- my mom is rich? And then whatever. So like I'll buy it and I'll go to school because every once a month on Friday, once a month, every Friday, we'll go to the park and we'll have Teen Town. 
which is like where all the little horny middle school kids will go and grind on each other and dance. Fucking Epstein Island. Well, yeah, yeah there's a bunch of little kids, little little kids only, you know, no, no. That shit's ain't crazy when you think about that shit. So in then, hindsight. so then, so then, my dad's are like, "Hey, you spent seven hundred dollars this month on this Macy's cars. What the fuck is going on?" She goes, "Hey." Stupid! You don't know what's going on. We already returned all that. The credit on that is coming on the next month. Don't even open the mail when it comes. Like you're dumb. You're from Mexico. Like shut the fuck up. You don't even know English. So she'll talk to my dad like that. And he goes, "Okay, okay." And then my dad has always been the kind of guy where like he goes to work and on Friday nights he'll get his check. And what I do is I take a picture of it and I deposit it straight into my bank account. So what he does, he goes, he gets his check and he just hands it over to my mom. And he did that for like 25 years. And he goes, oh, my mom's like, she's always been the accountant of the family, right? Damn. So like she was running this game on my dad for like 20 (laughs) years. And then like one time my dad's like, you know, it's been 20 years. I've been giving you my check. You're working. I'm working. We got to have at least $100,000 saved up. Uh, My dad's like, what? Where are you going? I'm going to keep telling the story. So my dad's like, so by this point. We have to have at least a hundred thousand dollars saved up. I want to buy a new minivan for the family. We're gonna go on vacation. Cuffed up a little mucus. That was probably gross. We're Sorry. gonna we're going on vacation. Let's go to Mexico for like six months and just say fuck America. And then my moms are like, "We've been broke for the last nine months." <laughs> <laughs> and my dads are like, "What the fuck have By you the been? Way. What the fuck have you been doing with the money?" And then, bro, I had a, that was one of the things that like I had to grow up with. Like my parents always fighting about money. They were always like, they always had good jobs and we always had good insurance and we were lower middle class and everything. We had our own, we're like one of the only families that have your, you have your own house. You're not even in an apartment. Yeah. We're doing okay. We can afford to be on baseball teams and this and that. We, we eat out on Fridays, but during the week we don't. So we've been doing good, but not great. And then like the money problem starts. So then you see the money fights and like, you know, that, that, that kind of shit goes on. Yeah. My but, parents had that, but I never saw it. Until but later. my mom was like, oh, man, any chance she got, she'll just take us to the mall. I used to always get jealous because she would take us to the mall. And then, like, I didn't understand that women's clothes is so inexpensive and men's is so expensive. So, like, we'll go to the mall and then she'll buy my. That's why we have the wage gap. She'll buy, like, my sister, like, 17 shirts for a dollar. And then she'll go to, like, JC Penny goes, this South Pole shirt is this South Pole shirt is forty two dollars. Do you really want it? I'm like, yeah, I want it. Okay, give it to me. And then my sister was just about like eighteen dollars at the do- eighteen shirts at the dollar store. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Because brands, yeah, brand name. That's where the brand thing came in. And that's what I mean. That's what I do now. Like, I'd much rather go fucking. I'll buy a fucking pack of five black t shirt, good fellow t shirts from Target. For like twenty bucks, as opposed to spending thirty dollars on one T-shirt. Like I don't, don't really, I don't care about that shit. Like I like I, I like it's. I want to look nice, and like recently I started getting more shoes, I guess, and more like I only have one pair of jeans, but I got like more shoes, like different colors, because everything I wear is all black. Funny story, I was at work the other day, and I had like my fucking black sweats and shit, and that's kind of why I wore shorts and fucking <laughs> comfy shit. Still a terrible drip. But fucking, I was wearing like black sweats and a black shirt, and my homegirl at work was like, oh, Jeff, you're wearing your podcast outfit today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck, I do just wear all black. Well, I got gray now, bitch. I'm Jeff, rocking the gray. Hey, shout out to the homegirl that told him about his <laughs> podcast drip. Look, we got to start like a GoFundMe or something about like, just pay for this guy's drip. Like, send me 50 bucks per episode and I'll go to Ross and I swear I'll drip this fool out with $50 at Ross. I have so many pairs of like this same black looking basketball shorts in my drawer. It's fucking insane. And like, I go through my closet and trying to look for colors. There's black, like black dry fit shirts, black, black, one gray, black, 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 <laughs> black, black, some fucking print shirt I got from Target that's black. And it's just like, I, I told you last color. episode, like, I'm like the fucking, the regular, regular question asker on the podcast, and you're the color commentator. But the thing is that you don't wear any colors. I don't wear any colors. I don't like see your color, brain. Dude. I don't see. I just see human race, and I just see clothes. I don't that's, see color. That's the woke ass Long Beach in you. Like you want to be woke and fucking nah, fuck woke people. Anyways, like this was like he's the color commentator. Our shit's going viral right now. I keep getting fucking buzzed. Um, Go to sleep. Don't be woke. 
so this was like the color commentator like he always has the the fucking points and i just bring the questions but like he never wears colors so like bro i got guys, spongebob socks on guys 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 it's please yellow and blue he has spongebob socks like jellyfishing and he thinks it's drip so like bro, let's start a go fund me you know what too. instead of the go fund me like bro, go to our patreon go to our patreon and for three dollars a month you can support jeff's drip <laughs> bro there, we have a three dollar segment. We have a seven dollar and a ten dollar. Like, please clothes just don't like, make the man. Man make the clothes. But if clothes, and if you work hard, hard people make works and work for hard lives of kids that will use the popcorn button. But if it was free, like, how would you dress yourself? Like, what brand? Probably the same. I believe it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. I hate dressing up. I look nice as fuck when I dress up. Like I've been in weddings and shit. I just fucking hate it. You trying to be comfortable? Yeah, I just I live for comfort. Like I don't, and I don't got nobody to impress. I really don't give a fuck about impressing people. Like I don't. Yeah, you like just, there's you some just... people at my work who like they look fly as shit, and I'm like, fuck, I wish I cared like that, or I wish I had clothes like that. But it's simple. It's when simple. I go to work, look, it's like not a that dad. hard. It's not that hard. Yeah, I just don't care. Just like a couple of different, you know. Yeah, I just I bought a new twenty dollar pair of Pumas from fucking Ross, and I was like, I'm doing something. I was like, Material girl, you know? <laughs> Material girl. <laughs> but the thing is, like Jeff, like his aspect or his thoughts on life is like My the Asperger's. Sa- your Asperger's, the burgers on your <laughs> in your butt, also known as fucking uh, hemorrhoids, monkey paws. Oh. Um, he does that with everything, like alcohol, the way he dresses. Well, alcohol is decent. I used to be terrible, very generic with alcohol. What would you drink before? Fucking E and J and shit. And oh shout my out, god! Shout out to Lamont, Coach Lamont. When me and Vince were coaching at Lakewood, I remember this dude Lamont told us that he's like, "Hey man, stop drinking that shit." He was like, "Spend a couple extra five ten dollars and get like at least some decent shit." He was like, "If you're gonna drink that, at least get like Jack Daniels or Jameson or something." He was like, "Even then, you could do better than that." But if you can't like. Spend like the little extra five ten dollars and get some because it's poison mid shelf shit. It's fucking poison. Yeah, he was like, but get little mid shelf poison instead of that low grade plastic bottle yeah, poison. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. And I was like, I always remember that because I was like, that's such the fucking truth. that's great advice. Yeah, because this bottle of El Padrino is probably like thirty two, thirty five bucks. It's not crazy, but it's not no fucking ten dollars. I, I thing can respect that. That's tequila. why I drink it because it tastes good, it has a good smell, and it's clear. Like you still drink Hennessy. Not anymore. That shit's overrated. I never jumped. I never Not got anymore. on the Hennessy Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because I used to be so excited. That shit is gross. I used to be so excited to drink it. Before I switched to normal two three, my Instagram name was, you became a different person. My my Instagram name used to be Cognac Poppy, OVO. Cognac Poppy. Tell me why you hate Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Look, this is part two of our last episode. Uh. What you guys heard in the last episode was like the last 15 minutes of an, an argument that me and Jeff had for like two hours about like why Kendrick's last or Kendrick in general, as far as his discography, is not my favorite and why his is the favorite. Why you're stupid. <laughs> and uh, it comes down to this. It's just taste. It's just taste. You know, like it's just not my favorite. <laughs> it's not my type of shit. Um, Kendrick, even though he's from Compton and... He's a good kid from a mad city. Look, growing up, my pimp's pimp, butterflies, though. To pimp a butterfly, to right? Pimp's butterfly. But that's a, that's a, that's like a I don't even know what you call it. That's a saying. Like, damn, what he is pimp's butterfly? What is a butterfly? The to, to butterfly. me, that's to me that's a beautiful woman, right? A, a, a wild woman that can be tamed. You could try to pimp a butterfly, but it would be very difficult because butterflies do what they gotta do. Anyways, back to the whole Kendrick thing. Look deep. All time, on my all top, all time favorite rappers has always been The Game, Drake. Damn, after that, it's it's just a steep hill to me. Like my my, I don't even have a top five. I just have a top two. It's just The Game and Drake. After that, it could be fuck. It could be anybody, bro. Like, and I don't want to say fucking any, Macklemore, bro. It could be. I don't want to be cliche and be like Tupac, Big L, Wu Tang Clan, bro. Like some of my favorite shit is Psycho Realm, but that's not. I feel Big L is not very like cliche. I think it a is. lot of people don't put Big L once in you roll top off five. Once even you, though he Big L is Big L. Once you get in like deep undercovers, as far as like, then it becomes a competition. Look, and I'm one of those guys that like I love competition. Right, everything should be a competition. Everything in life, your job, your girl, your life, your marriage, everything's a competition, right? But then when it gets to hip hop, like that's when I draw a line. Where, like maybe it's not a competition. Like maybe I need to, I need to restructure my life. Where like. 
it really doesn't matter who your top five is, who my top five is. No, it's all subjective. Because then it comes to subjectiveness. It's like, what's your taste? Well, hip hop itself, as artists, is a competition. It's competitive. Like when Kendrick dropped that control verse. But that's why you can always argue. Like when people argue about top fives and shit like that and their list, it's all subjective. It's like, bro, that's I, my list. To like me, my favorite artist of all time is my favorite artist. It doesn't have to be yours. And then people are just like, that's fucking wrong. It's wrong. Like, yeah, it's look, not. I want to I I deep dive into it, which won't even be that long. Like people who like tell you like, this is my top one, top two. This is my favorite type of rap. This is what I like. And then you tell somebody else, like, this is what I love. And then they disagree with it. The number one thing they're going to say next, like, all right, who's your top five? And then that right there is like, is like a white flag. It's a white flag Smoke to me. Smoke it on your top five tonight. It's a white flag tonight. because once you go like, all right, tell me your top five. You cannot. You can't. You can't do that. You can't go 7,000 rappers in different genres and different times and different beats and different tempos and different RPMs and different. You can't. It's impossible. Whenever someone Macklemore, brings up Will Smith, <laughs> when someone brings up top fives, like I, I want to get out of the conversation. I'm I'm done because my top five is never going to be your top five, and there's just no right or wrong answer. So well, you don't even have a top five. You got a top two. Yeah, it's just Drake in the game, and I got two. I got two modes in my life. Like I'm in the street. I want to beat somebody up, and I give no fucks about nobody else. I I don't care about you or your children. I'm bumping some game. The documentary. Do you not mixtape? Uh, the fucking doctor's advocate i'm bumping some shit and i'm just on killer mode or i'm retrospective and taking everything into effect that's happened to me since i was born to now i'm just saying you can do i would never be a simp drake is no simp bro drake has fucked so so many people's wives and girlfriends that you bro he's like putty tang like please you don't understand the madness petty as hell and he's petty. That man, petty crocker. Most pimps and players are petty. So, like, I just don't want to talk about that. But, like, top, once you get into the top five argument, I got I to gotta bow out. I got to bow out. So, you have you have. So, that's why five? you hate Kendrick. Kendrick is not my cup of tea. He doesn't do it for me. Have you heard the album? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I heard it a couple times. Twice already. What you think? Uh... It's just not for me. He has, heard that, the, that he one, has three or four good songs. That one Eminem S toxic song that we cry together. With the girl. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. That shit. That's insane. one of that's one of my favorite songs. And I give would, me my keys. I would love to see who the girl is. It's some actress. That that one song could be a whole movie. I guess it's some actress. She's not even a rapper or nothing. <sighs> well, that girl needs to start rapping. She's like just some actress chick. That girl Pretty needs hot. to start rapping. Pretty she hot. was amazing. Yeah, so that was, that's a dope ass song. That's great acting. That's definitely very. That's why. M&M-esque. That's why. Like that song took the album from like. All right, this is no longer rap. This is this is spoken word, theatrical, just, like drama, saw, Broadway. I saw, saw a meme that was like every fucking toxic person's favorite song on the I've album. I've been through that, bro. Is that shit. 100%. If, if you listen to that song, took somebody's keys. If you listen to that song and it doesn't throw you back into where you were in a similar situation in a relationship, like. You ever took some keys or thrown a phone? Yet. You haven't lived yet, bro. You ever took some keys or thrown a phone? You ever acted up at a family party that wasn't your family? Fuck yeah. <laughs> that song right there took me back like, damn, I used to be toxic. That I feel be guilty. Piece of shit. I took a shoe that I bought for some chick. Not even both shoes. I took one shoe. I bought her some shoes and I took one back when we broke up. I've done so much worse. She caught me cheating on her and I was mad. We've already spent a lot of time in this Kendra thing. Let me, let me ask you another question. Uh, guess what the number one thing that ensures you'll be happy in your new relationship? The number one thing that ensures I'll be happy in a new relationship? Yeah. What guarantees your happiness? It could be anything. Like, I don't know. You get into a relationship with a new girl. What needs to happen to make sure this one ends up happy unlike the other ones? Anal. Wrong. Try again. You get two more answers. Close enough. Friendship. Wrong. Next one. Money. All right, so there's a study. A sexy dad. There's a study in Harvard that went down, and like I completely agree with it. And I'm not the type of guy to be woke and agree with these fucking studies, but you fucking Harvard woke fucks. <laughs> but right now, like, the fuck, do you know this uh, study is completely uh, agreeing? And I agree with my new relationship right now. Like, 
you need to go into the relationship already completely happy and fulfilled and not looking for anything. Because when you go into a relationship, uh, this girl's going to be the reason why I buckle down and start going to work every day. This girl's the reason why I'm going to give up all call. This girl's the reason why I'm going to start taking my life serious. This girl, like, I'm in a relationship now, and because of this, I'm going to start taking this, like... Whenever you put those stipulations in that type of t- type of relationship and it doesn't go right, you're like, you know what? I was I was wrong. Fuck this bitch. I'm gonna go back to drinking. I'm gonna go back to like not going to work. So like the thing is, and it's true what our parents always tell us, and it's cliche. Like you need to go into a relationship already completely happy with yourself, fulfilled, and whatever happens, happens. Oh well, yeah, because you can't love someone who doesn't love themselves. Yes, both people need to be already in love, fully yeah. in love with themselves. Yeah, and if someone's very codependent on somebody else, then that situation is not going to work out. So you have to, you, if they don't love themselves, you can't fully love them. And also, you can't teach somebody how to love themselves. Of coming from a person, if we're going to get deep, we can get deep. Coming from a person who's tried to kill themselves on multiple occasions, it's like, I remember the times when I hated being That's by myself. That's deep. Okay, you're going to brush over that? Like, but, yeah. Two okay, times, but look, tried pe- twice. But, but tell, like, me, tell me this, am I right, am I right or am I wrong? People like you knowing that you've done that and like you're not in the best mental state, you still find yourself like jumping into relationships that you know you're not ready for, but you jump into it. Why? Looking for what? Not anymore. Looking for help. But back then, why would you jump into a relationship if you're already thinking about killing yourself? Because I hated myself. So I needed some fucking, I needed some sort of a, like a crutch someone some to help. like help me and justify me and make me feel like I'm a, I'm a worth it person. But did you tell that girl that like, hey, you no. know what? I'm thinking about killing myself. I'm, no. I'm, I'm using you as like to help me. Like, of course she wasn't ready for that. No, of course you're not going to say that to him. She wasn't but ready for just that. what you say deep down is like, so coming from a person who's tried that and coming from a person who hates being alone and hates being in their own company Facts. to now, I love being by myself and every now and then. You know, still get sad and will still have those thoughts and shit, but I'll never try it again. But now you know how to get through that night. That's the thing. That's the whole point of the argument. Like, you're going through things and you think getting with somebody and fucking somebody and being is going to help you get through it. Like, no, you need to take care of those demons no matter how hard it is. Because trust me, being depressed and single is probably one of the hardest things ever. Well, no one could, no one could help you love yourself and teach you how to love yourself other than you. You could be in, in and out of all the relationships. You could talk to therapists, and which definitely helps. You can do all that. But until you finally learn to love yourself and accept yourself for all your flaws and everything like that, it's, it's, that's, Nothing's going to change. And like, I'm a very open person, sometimes to a fault. Sometimes I could be more vulnerable than I should be. Sometimes I say the most outlandish shit that I shouldn't say, which is like a defense mechanism because I want the attention and I need the the validation of the laughter from the jokes and shit like that. Right. But like, I take that shit and, you know, so coming, like knowing the place that I've been before and like being in a hospital bed and fucking at 19 years old and having my grandma and mom out there and shit, like, after I just took a bunch of pills and shit, like, it's just, it's, it's a shitty feeling. And then, like, you know, and it's just, it, it happens and it hurts and it sucks. But, you know, it's always going to be, there's always a brighter side. There's always, it's always more out there for you. And, you know, like, so, yeah, you can't love somebody who doesn't love themselves because at that point I was unlovable. And even now, I might not be 100% lovable, but I'm way more lovable You're far than away I was from that. You're far away because from that. Because I was a completely different person. And now it I'm might just, take the right person to get you from like, you were like a 0% lovable. Now you're at maybe 90. You just need an extra little 10%. There's nothing wrong with needing a little extra 10% to get you over the hump. Well, yeah, nobody's perfect. But these conversations that we're having right now, which is super real conversations, was like, no one's had these conversations and it wasn't normal. So I'm glad we're having it today at the Letter of the Podcast. But like, you can't jump into a relationship, no matter how beautiful she is, how awesome she is, how level-centered she is, no matter if she has a master's degree in psychology. Like, you know what? I'm fucked up in the head. I'm going to get with this girl. She's going to straighten me out. And then we're going to end up happy ever after. No. You no, can, you can never look for that. You can't do that. You got to go into it already. Like, I already been through my struggle. I've been through my fire. Now I'm ready. But, bro, suicide's a real thing. Uh Sometimes we need help, we need friends, and uh, you need to be able to tell the people, like, hey, you know what? I might tell you that I love you, and I'm, I'm looking for a relationship, but I, what I really re- need right now is fucking a friend. And sometimes we need professional help. And my thing is this. My thing is this. I want to get down to the bottom so people understand what we're talking about. Is like you can't get, you can't expect a normal, healthy relationship that ends up in marriage and kids and be happy ever after. If you're depressed, you hate yourself, you have low self-esteem, you're, you're abusing drugs, you're abusing alcohol. If you're doing these three or four things, it's not going to work. Why are you talking to me like Fix that? Fix those things first. Don't talk to me like that. Because I've been there, bro. I've been there before, young as fuck. 
dealing with childhood trauma, dealing with, with alcoholism and dealing with like al a drug abuse and like thinking that getting in a relationship with the right person was going to help me fix it. Well, like, and I'm telling you by experience, it doesn't help you. It doesn't work. When you said the I love you part brings up a question that I've thought before that do you tell your friends you love them? Hardly ever. Why? Unless I'm drunk. Unless I'm drunk. Why? Uh, as far as like being friends with somebody and tell them, hey, I love you, bro. I fucking love you. Not even that. Just on the way out. Like I say it to you all the time. On the way out, be like, all right, I love you, bro. Yeah. Like, now, now as an older man, it's it's uh it's normal to me. But growing up, let's say from like twelve to like well, twenty six, yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah, it was gay. It was a gay thing to say. Yeah, yeah. like Are you fucking faggot. What the fuck you mean? You love me, nigga? You trying to rape me in my butt or something? Like, no, I don't fucking love you. Never thought that. But but yeah. like now, it's like a you know twenty eight and up. I'm like, hey, bro, like I do love you too. And call me if you need anything. Man. Like I'm willing to like leave work for like four week, four day, five days if you want to just come here and just like sleep over and like need some mental health. I'll be here for you type shit. Where like when I was 21 or 22 or 17 or 16 and you told me like, hey, can you just like kick it with me for five days? I think I want to kill myself. I'm like, stop being a fucking bitch. Like, go yeah, that's how you're trained sometimes. But I, say, I would never do that. But I now, now, now I'm down. Now I'm down for that shit. I feel like I feel like people put too much emphasis in it. I say it to people. You know, that I've known for like a year. Be like, all right, I love you, bro. And like, they don't say it back. I get mad when they don't say it back, though. Because I'll be like, I love you, bro. And they'll be like, all right. And be like, you hear what I just said? Say that shit back. But it's like, the people put too much emphasis on the word love. It's not like, I'm in love with you. I'm not like, I fucking take a bullet for you. Which, most of the time, if I tell you I love you, I probably would. Just be, and that's just who I am. But also, it's just like, when I say I love you, it's I have love for you. You like you're a fucking friend to me. You're a close person to me. Like I have love for you. Like you're not. No and one. I've never been really scared to like. I've tried to do it. Try to be the cool guy and be like, oh, no, nah, fuck that. I don't have feelings and shit. But I've always <laughs> had feelings. But like I, I'm very like I say that all the time. I say it to all my homies all the time. Like all right, love you, bro. Love you, love you, love you. And it's just because in this fucking crazy ass world, it's like yo, just let people know they're loved and appreciated. Because I yeah. know times when I've have been loved and appreciated, but I didn't love and appreciate myself so now i'd like send that out to people just so they know that you're loved and appreciated yeah. by somebody it's just tough even though like you're completely right with your statement we like, also grew up in two different you can't expect everyone to feel that way like, yeah we grew up in two completely different lifestyles though too yeah. so it's just similar different. but different at the same time i was more suburbs hey bro uh one time like i used to uh i have a maserati right and then um I light flex. I I rent it out. That's one of the reasons why I couldn't I afford it. Maserati, right? So like whenever I feel like I need extra money, I put it on this app and someone rents it out for four days. I try to kill myself. I got Maserati. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I don't even feel bad. But people will come. People will come and like rent my car, right? So this one time this guy from Kansas Kansas. Kansas City comes to rent my car in Kansas City, Missouri? Yeah. Because it's not in Kansas. There's Kansas City, Missouri, and there's Kansas and Kansas. Anyways, this guy's from the Midwest. He's a white boy. He comes to rent my car, and he picks it up. He gets dropped off the airport, LAX, and he drives over here, and then he picks up my car, and he goes, oh, damn, I wasn't expecting this. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, this is like the suburbs, right? Southgate is the suburbs. Like, you live, God, damn. you live in the suburbs. Like, look at all these little cookie-cutter houses, like. This is a nice city. Like when when I saw the when he saw the location on the map and he saw like South Central, Compton, you know, East LA, he goes, I was expecting something different. And I was like, that like, bro, okay, like it looks Yeah, your neighbor cookie. doesn't look the worst. It looks cookie cutter, but like Yeah, shit goes down. If you go to Compton, it's gonna look the same. You know, it's, if you look to go to Inglewood, it's gonna look cookie cutter too. Like, yeah, there's don't certain get, parts of everywhere. Don't get fooled yeah, by yeah. like just because there's houses here. It's not it looks like that. It's yeah. not a big city. And he's all like, "Oh man, my bad." Like, I don't like. No, no, I'm just saying. You're like, hey, you're gonna be in LA with my car for the next couple of days. Like, hey, be careful. Like, don't don't even like you know. So I put him up on game. So like, the thing is this. Like, it might look sweet out here, but like. Bro, it's not sweet. Anyways, I want to move on. I don't want to move on from this fucking Damn, conversation. Yeah, but also, coming from fucking Kansas City and then trying to drive a Maserati in L.A., that fucking sucks. Just driving over here right now, fucking in my 97 Corolla fucking suck. People are idiots and people are assholes and don't know how to drive. So trying to drive from probably fucking rural fucking Kansas City to driving a Maserati in L.A., that probably fucking is terrifying. It's like I wasn't expecting like this looks nice. That's probably here. terrifying. People don't know how to drive. For I'm all like, shit out. I'm all like, what do you do? And he goes, Oh, like, oh, I'm a fucking construction worker. I'm like, oh, you're a construction worker in Kansas City. I'm like, 
So, you know, you, I'm sure you've met, he goes, oh, all my coworkers are Mexicans. I'm like, all right, well, everyone here, all these houses, these Mexicans are, all, are everywhere. These are owned by Mexicans. He goes, oh, okay, we're cool, we're cool. And then his girlfriend was like in the corner, like holding onto her bag, like Am shaking. Raped. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving I don't on. Don't feel comfortable. So there was a video that came out today where a bunch of firefighters jumped the bum. Did you see I that video? I saw that shit. Tell me what you think about that. They fucked his ass up. Low key. I don't know the behind story to it, but apparently he kept trying to come in, break into the station or some shit. That's the bet. Don't do it. That's the behind story. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the whole station to it. I mean, the whole station, the whole story to it. But I mean, like. Fucking firefighters are dope. Like, no one hates firefighters. People hate cops and shit, but no one hates firefighters. So if they got to the point where they had to do that, I'm sure that shit was probably just annoying. Yeah, so and then people just catching on. I'm tired of people catching everything on fucking phones and cameras and shit. Imagine back in the day. Like, like just why? Was that a phone camera, though, or was that just like a uh, camera, camera? It had to be. It had to be. The angle was like somebody in like in a big truck. So par- apparently, there's this bum. This, they called it a transient. They didn't even call it a bum. I thought it was. So is it a trans person or what the fuck is a transient? A transient is a person that doesn't live here, no there, just trans. Oh, like a nomad. So, See, I saw transient. Like a, vis- thought, like a virus. I kept seeing the fucking, like the, the headline, transient, transient. Tra- I thought it was like a trans person. And I was like, oh shit, now they're going to fucking make this firefighter <laughs> fucking hate crime. Bro, I'm so just retarded though. So I thought that was a fucking on one of my routes on, on one of my truck driving routes. I have to drive by a firefighter academy, right? And sometimes I see like 30, 40 firefighters who want to be part of the academy, like running outside in like a minute. There's like six by 10, they're all bald headed. You could tell they're going through like firefighter boot camp. They have to go through Actually, fires. Gnarly, though. These guys are like, I'm like, damn, these fools train like Marines. These guys train like cops. Like these fools train like. Straight soldiers. Well, yeah, bro. Fuck I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm just thought, like, like break into a building that's on fire. And I just thought like, damn, these fools are down to like give up their lives to go like maybe find a cat. Dude, and, fuck yeah. So then firefighters are heroes. So then I saw this Shout video out. where like the firefighters have their full like heat, like they're wearing brown, like they're wearing their full fucking mask, what like the full uniform, and then this little transient is trying to like break into one of their cars or steal something. And then you just see the firefighters, boom, throwing hands and beating him up. Yeah, bro. And I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm, I'm with the firefighters on this one. Like, anybody tries to break in my car, steal my food, like, bro, we're here to serve the public. Like, yeah. the last people you want to steal from is the people that are going to save your mom that's in a wheelchair in a burning house. But I was like, there was something, I think it was in Long Beach or something like that. There was, like, firefighters came or something. And some dude, like, shot the firefighters and, like... Like firefighters came or something. They don't Somebody, even have like, guns. Killed the firefighters and you're like, bro, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? Why would you? Do firefighters that? don't even have guns, bro. I want to give a big shout out to all the firefighters out there. Like, that's like the the last noble like job you have in this fucking earth, especially like in California and in LA, where like everything's so like political. Like, oh yeah, I want to get paid to like run into burning buildings and save people and also save their property and all their belongings. You could be a librarian. And what do, you, what do you get out of it? Um, a nice fucking salary. Do you understand? Like, no. Do you understand the life of, of a fucking firefighter? Like, he could be married with kids. Like, all right, kids, I'll see you guys once a week. I have to go sleep in this shit seven no, days and, do like, and then go back home I for a couple. they do like three, four days on and then like three days off. Okay, regardless, but once you're done with your shift at wherever you work, you get to go home for like sleep three, four days. Yeah. And then, but these guys are doing like fucking 1748s. Like, bro, the firefighters are the last people you want to fuck with. Like, Maybe a cop, maybe a sheriff, maybe an FBI agent, maybe something else, like somebody with a gun. Fucking Ozarks. You know, something with a gun. But like firefighters, bro, beat up any bum you want. And also, I have no, I have yeah, no, I, I have no that. heart for bums. I have no heart for bums. They're cracked out. They're living on the street. They rather just like beg for money instead of get a job. Like get a fucking job or like start your own city in the fucking middle of the Damn, desert. You're like fucking uh, what's his name, Patrick Bateman or whatever from American Psycho. I've never seen that movie. You never seen that shit with Christian Bale? American Psycho. American Psycho with Christian Bale? No. Nah, fuck. Never mind. Uh, Reference ruined. Uh, California people. Two Californians have just won. Three hundred and sixty million dollars, uh, and they got to split it, which is like a hundred and fifty-seven each. Uh, so two color, two California people just won the Powerball, three hundred and sixty million dollars. And usually it's like someone from Florida, someone from Chicago. We never win this shit. So finally, we got two people from California to win the Powerball. 
Um, he didn't win the full 316, 316, but he got at least 150. Don't give a fuck. What was the first thing you would buy if you gave you 150 million? It's from the guy that doesn't love money and material things. 150 million? You got to give at least 75 to California for taxes. So what? That's 75 mil? Yeah. And then every year you don't spend it. 75 million? Wait, hold on. Shit. Every, every year you don't spend it, California takes another half and another half and another half and another half. Do they? Fuck you, Joe so, Biden. So you got like one year to spend whoever, 75. Gavin Newsom, fucking Robert Garcia, whoever so, the fuck it is. So what are you doing? House, car, house where? Where'd you buy a house? Nothing crazy. I might go to little suburbs of Cerritos or some shit. Maybe little suburbs bad, of Lakewood. I'd probably stay around where I'm at. But look, also Maybe somewhere nice and Long Also, Beach. when you win the lottery, like they put your picture on the news and everyone knows you won the lottery. Until you spend all the money and then you don't have no more money. But they're gonna keep knocking on your door like every day. Okay. Don't put my picture up. You got your curve. Probably game house. Show. Nice house. Decent car. Probably fucking I don't know, like fucking nineteen ninety nine, uh something. No. Probably like a new fucking <laughs> I'd probably honestly That's still a good get question. Like, you got I'd money. I'd honestly still get like That's a good question. You got a good Civic? You got good money. Like, what is a new car you would buy? Like, what kind of car I'd would you want? Probably get like a new Civic. But you have no kids. What if you have kids? That's why I have the Civic. A minivan? I wouldn't like go buy like a Ferrari or nothing like that. Oh, of course not. But I might get like a fucking I don't know, Mercedes. Nice Mercedes or Which something one? like that. I don't, I don't know cars. There's a $30,000 one, there's a $250,000 one. 30,000. The basic one? Yeah. I'm going to get something nice like that. The same Bro, size I, as I, I, My cars in my life, I've had an 85 Civic. I had an 88 Corolla. And now I have a 97 Corolla. The car I have now was an upgrade because it had power windows. I didn't have to fucking crank my windows up anymore. That was my upgrade. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go. I the, got the whoop. <laughs> the truck I drive at work, I got to roll this shit up. I'm like, God yeah. damn it. Who, who fucking, are we? I'm a, this is supposed to be a man. big company. Definitely buy my mom. Buy my so mom get, your spot. Li- get your little whip. I buy my mom a spot. Make sure my brother and sister are fine. Make sure my dad's fine. My grandma's cool. She's already, she got money. My uncles are cool. And then other than that, I don't know, fucking find someone to help me invest the money and shit. I don't know shit about money because yeah, I never Yeah, you had don't, money. you don't. This is a hard, okay, this is what I would do. Okay, look, I will buy one big ass house, like uh, a mansion that only has like. You make like a little influencer house? No, no, no. I will buy a, a mansion that has like, okay, it's my mom, my dad, my sister, so my brother. Like property. And they all got kids. So there's at least at least 15 people, right? So when you I get f- someone pregnant for sure. So we need five rooms each. Whether you want to live there or not, like this is just your room whenever you want to come. So that property is going to cost like 7 million. But I would never tell my grandma, my cousins, everybody else where we live like this is just our hidden hidden bunker, right? So that's like 7 million. I got 140 left. I'm putting 130. Nah, you don't because Taxes. They took seventy five. So no, but got no three sixty. Three sixty was the top. So yeah, but we split now it. I lowered how it. Come, how come you get three sixty and I only get now we're lowered fifty? No, now we lowered it to one fifty. Yeah, but you said they took seventy five. So it's people? only seventy five mil. All right, so now I have seventy five mil. You're right. You're right. You're so right. you start with seventy five mil. So from seventy five, from seventy five, I'll take five million. Buy my parents and my, we'll buy a family house that no one knows where we live but it's just this is just our our sanctuary like my 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 brother my sister their kids my parents and my dad like, but no one you can't the secret is you can't tell no one that we live here like this is just our sanctuary right but it's gonna get out so that's five million it could be chino hills or marino valley somewhere super far somewhere in the mountains big bear i don't give a fuck so i got 70 mil right so i got 70 mil but everyone knows i'm rich everyone knows i'm rich by alabama so then i'll put like 10 million to the side for when people come at all my, I have you know I have forty six cousins. That's a lot of cousins. I have eighteen uncles and aunts. That's a lot of uncles and, and aunts. And all four of my grandparents are still alive. So that's like seventy six people. So ten million off the side for them after I pay my taxes. So then I have yeah, 50, how many of them are you really close with? Almost none of them. They never come to my house, but they're gonna, they're gonna come looking for me. You know, it's a Mexican yeah. thing. They're gonna come looking for me. Fuck them. So now I have fifty million, right? Each bank account in America is only insured or guaranteed up to 250000 So that's probably 250000 and every million is four. I got 50. Four times 50 is what, 400? So I would open 400,000 bank accounts and put all my money into CDs where every month I get 1% back. 
because I'm, I'm basically put money in the CD. I'm based Spotify because and it's Apple and streaming because and it's shit. guaranteed by law that if even yeah, the well, bank buy blows CDs up anymore, you no no no, it's not a CD. It's called you a, said CD. You said I buy four hundred thousand CDs, bro. We got streaming. Why the fuck would you buy CDs? A CD is, is a special bank account where like you give the bank the money and they have to go invest it. And even if they lose, you're guaranteed all your money plus 1%. I don't remember the last CD I bought. So then every month I'm gaining at least, what's 1% of 50 million? Somebody peeled out over there. I don't know. It's off care. It's like 50,000 a month. So even though my money is secured by the government, I'm getting fifty thousand every month, fifty thousand every month, fifty thousand every month. So now I'm only spending those fifty thousand months over those four hundred bank accounts, and then that fucking fifty million I invested it will never go to okay, waste. See, that's fucked up because you I got a mental about this question yeah. and you already did it out. You just asked I'm, me I'm on the fly. Game. You asked me on the fly, and I was like, I don't know. I buy a fucking this, Honda Civic. This is perfect. That's fucked up. This is perfect because you I don't fucking know. Yeah, most people would think about you, but like I'm, I'm spinning game. Like, fuck, I got a cramp in my foot. This is what you really gotta do. And then if you want to learn more about this, just hit me up later. Yeah, hit them up about your CDs and fucking cancel your Spotify on. streaming service. Uh, little He's Wayne, get your CDs. Little God, Wayne man. is beefing with Mark Bro, Cuban. They already, they already fixed it. Fuck, my feet hurt. They're cramping up. Uh, they already fixed it, but that's such a crazy ass. Tell beef. me how it started. Tell little Wayne and Mark Cuban. Well, good little Wayne called Luca a hoe because little, little Luca's a beast. And then fucking Mark Cuban replied with whatever lyric it was, like something about in the front row, talking shit or whatever in the front row. And then fucking Lil Wayne's like, I'll have your ass slapped. And it's like, Lil Wayne, you're Lil Wayne. I get it. I love you. Respect you. That's Mark Cuban, bro. That man got He's a billionaire. Money, money. He's a billionaire. Like, come on, dog. Don't do that. And then they fucking ended up making up and beef. So tell me why you think the Eagles are about to win the Super Bowl. The Eagles were never winning. Tell me why we did. We did. And we're about to again. So tell me why the Eagles are about to win the Super Bowl. Uh, you made two statements in the middle of this uh, intermission, which is um, Off the, mic. the AFC West for sure is probably one of the best divisions right now. Which is the, the I never said such a thing. The Chiefs, the Raiders, the Chargers. Never said such a and thing. The Broncos. And AFC they, West is trash. And then you said the second best might be the NFC West. And I told you, who's in NFC West? You said the Rams. Well, I forgot they got rid of Russell Wilson. The Rams, the Seahawks, the Cardinals. Niners and Cardinals. I forgot the Seahawks got rid Bro, of Russell. Oh, there's no way. Right now, we. Have, I, I do think the AFC West might be the best division. It for sure has the best the league. As a collective, it for sure has the best quarterback. Trying to think, the AFC North is nice. Yeah, NFC East is trash, bro. Except the Eagles, because we're about to win the Super Bowl. Stop, because, stop, bro, stop. we have top five, top ten cornerback duos and wide receiver duos in the league. Duos: James Bradbury and Darius Slay as our corners, oh, just, uh, and Devontae Smith talking about, and AJ Brown as our talking receivers. about like only wide receivers. A no, real, corners and, and receivers. A real duo is the wide receiver with the quarterback. What? The, your quarterback runs. It, your quarterback doesn't throw. What the fuck are you talking about? I said the a top duo. two. A I duo? Said the top two cornerback duos no, and no, receiver no. duos. Yeah, yeah. A receiver duo has... You, See, remember, not, when you said, remember earlier when you said that football is your third favorite sport? Then just let me take the realm on this. All I'm saying is our two receivers, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown... Our top five receiver duos in the league. Our cornerbacks, Darius Slay and now James Bradbury, are top two cornerback duos in the league. Are you done? Are you done? No. Are you done? No. I'm about to talk. Our front seven's fire. And then I want, I, I know you usually always try to cut me off, like in every episode, but like don't cut me off. Complete opposite, but okay. <sighs> Why receiver duels? So you're telling me that. Uh, like a Randy Moss, Chris Carter. A Ren, duo, the Ren, two receivers. Renfro, Warren, Arden, who? You mean Waller? Yeah, and he's a tight end. Okay, Adams. No, are not better than Devonte. Adams is a beast, but Adams and Renfro are not better than Devonte Smith and AJ Brown. Guys, you hear this guy? This, these are kind of like arguments I got. I got to deal with, and he wants to get loud and just to prove his point that he, like, he just gets louder and louder and louder. We this got man there. literally said football's his third favorite sport. Football's my number one. And I could completely I know a little more. What's a nickel package? Derek Carr, Avante Adams. What's a nickel on defense? What's a nickel cover? Renfro, Wallen. Avoids the question. Jacobs, a new front line. 
We got John Bone Jones brother as a our running back. As a running back? As a linebacker. linebacker. Sorry. I'm drunk. And we got fucking the Patriots complete offensive scheme. Like the, the Patriots scheme that just won like seven Super Bowls in the last 15 years. Derek Carr is your quarterback. Derek Carr is the most proficient quarterback in the last six or seven years. I don't know what we, we, we complained about. He so we're just making up stats now? He protects the ball. <laughs> we're just making up stats. Who's more proficient than him? Mr. Fumble into the end zone. is the mo- He protects the ball. Mr. Dive into the end zone and Who's fumble it. Now it's a touchback. Who's your quarterback? Jalen Hurts. How many playoff games has he won? Zero. <laughs> How many has Derek Carr won? <laughs> At least like three or four. At least? At least. How many years has he been in the league? Six, seven. Okay. Jalen Hurts has been a starter for one year. Made it to the playoffs in his first year. And it was supposed to be a rebuilding year. We still made the playoffs. Yeah, we just so happened to play fucking Tom Brady in the Bucks. Yeah, because it was one of those years where they let everybody in the playoffs. Is it? Bro, it's Is that why you guys barely early. made it in? Training cap hasn't even started. We almost beat the Bengals. We're one touchdown away. One touchdown away from the team that, that beat the Chiefs and got into the Super Bowl. We're one play away from getting inside the fucking end zone with, and then our head coach at the time, like our head coach from like week four to like week fucking 18 in the playoffs was like a, a special teams coach. And we still almost made the playoffs. No, you made the playoffs. No, we don't. Oh, okay. You, we didn't make the playoffs, but we almost made the Super Bowl. I wouldn't say all that. We were one play away. The Bengals you beat us. You played in the wild the, card the, game. The, the, the Bengals beat us at, at the fucking. Uh, the Bengals beat us at, at the one yard line. You played in the wild How card round. How much closer can you get? That doesn't mean you almost made the Super Bowl because you lost in the wild card round. And who the won? The fuck are you talking about? And who won the wild card round? There's multiple teams playing in the, the wild Bengals, card round. The Bengals won. They won that game. They didn't win the wild card That's the round. Game, this game I'm talking about. They didn't win the wild card they round. They won that game and then went to go beat the Chiefs by a field goal. They played two more games after that and then went to the Super Bowl. And now the Chiefs don't even have Tyree Kill anymore. But they got Patty Mahomes. Look, man, the the Raiders should have made the Super Bowl last year. Things happened. John Gruden went down for some racist shit. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Our fucking receiver fucking crashed his 150. Yeah, he had that killer drive for sure. Henry Ruggs got that killer drive in him. You guys really missed that this season. Bro, like, we had so much, like, against us, like, stacked up against us, and we still almost did it. So, this year is, you know. It's- How'd you almost do it when you lost in a wild card and barely made the playoffs off the last win? You keep, like, passing it on, denying it, but we lost by, like, four yards and one that touchdown. That doesn't mean you almost won the Super Bowl. By the team that won, ended up being that the That doesn't Super Bowl. mean shit. That doesn't mean you almost won the Super Bowl. It literally means we're just almost there. It does not. Did you guys win the first your first playoffs game this year? No, nah, we lost right away. We lost just like you. That's what I thought. Yeah. When's the last time you won a Super Bowl? Were you even alive last time you raised one Super Bowl? 84. So, no. So, you weren't alive. I wasn't. All right. There you go. That's all I got to say. Oh, you want to talk about Super Bowls? You know when was the first time a Mexican American ever won a Super Bowl? The fuck's that have to do with anything? Tom Flores, quarterback. Uh, first time ever a, Me- a Mexican American person, a Mexican. Ever won a Super Bowl? Tom Flores quarterback. So the only time a, a player that was from that's Mexican American ever won a quarterback? Tom Flores. You know when was the last time a Mexican American coach ever won a fucking Super Bowl? Tom Flores again. He was coaching the fucking Raiders. You know when was the last time a black coach, uh, the first time a black coach ever won the Super Bowl? Art Show. So as far as teams and like minorities and like not bleeding into your white side of football. The only team that has ever gained. All I said was you alive the last time the, the Raiders won the Super Bowl. Time and you, you want to bring shit up from the 80s. So why I'm why not saying, stop at the 80s and I'm go into the saying, 60s the and the time? 70s? Why you bring up the 80s? We're talking who's about the, today. Who's the first we were talking black about quarterback? Last year. Who's the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl? We were talking about last year. Who's the first black we were quarterback to win a Super Bowl? last year. And then you want to bring up, when's the last time the Raiders won uh, the 80s? Because you said you almost won a Super Bowl because you lost in the wild card round. Bro, That's not how that works. And we would have beat the Bengals because the Bengals made it to the Super Bowl. They're the team that took us out. That's that's not how that that's works. Cur- that's directly. This is the thing where I can't argue with your Eagle fans. No, because you don't. If you love the Eagles, football. just move to Philadelphia, bro. You just don't understand football. Jesus Christ, get the fuck out of here! Did you know the red the <laughs> the Red Ranger got arrested for a PPP loan? I saw something about that. I feel like this all is, the Power Rangers are doing bad. Didn't one of them murder somebody? I feel like this is like except Kimberly. Kimberly's still doing good. She's probably I, doing some fuck shit. Too. I feel like this is like the origin story where like he was like trying to bring back the putties. 
or ooze from that one movie. <laughs> the ooze. <laughs> Didn't one of them murder somebody too? Who was, if anybody murdered somebody, it had to be Billy. Which one was that? The Blue Ranger. Was it Billy? I think so. I think one of them murdered somebody or something. I don't know. I just know Maybe not, the not a lot of them are Tommy. not. Tommy? Tommy? I know not a lot of them are doing too hot. I don't remember, bro. But he got busted. He's hitting the feds for a PPP loan. For all the COVID shit? Bro, what was he doing? Like a fucking Taekwondo class? Didn't he make like multi-million type shit? But he was kind of fierce at karate. Like he was. Every time like during the <laughs> show, he'd be like, fierce. Hoya, hoya, hoya. He was I was fierce, like, man. man, the Red Ranger? Fuck, dude. They need to get, uh, they all need to combine again. What the fuck was the name of this shit when they combined? Megazord. Megazord. There you go. They just need to fucking do that and figure this shit out and get it back together. Crazy. Get his little fucking dagger flute. We are the real tastemakers. We'll tell you what's dope because guess what? If you're whack, we're not going to listen to your music and we're not going to pay for it. We go, you go in, you do a concert, you look in the crowd, nothing but Hispanics. Mixed Hispanics. Feel me? It's no more white and blacks. Like, we got the money. We do. Ju- and guess what? What are Mexicans known as? Hardworking people. Yes, sir. We get jobs. Yes, sir. We pay our taxes. We do our thing. So I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of us not getting our respect. And on top of that, that bleeds, that bleeds into Mexicans trying to do music, Mexicans trying to do entertainment. When we try to bleed in and do our own thing, like what we're, what we're doing right now, no one wants to give us love because we're not this and we're not that. And I'm going to end my argument on that and let Def Jeff talk because I'm feeling heated. I don't know what to say. Yeah, you fucking hit every single point. Fucking free Cain Velasquez, baby. Brown pride. Viva raza. If you guys feel a certain way, DM me. If you want to leave a comment, comment me, whatever, boom. Hey, you know what? I, I noticed on Spotify or Apple Playlist when you guys... Apple Podcast, when you guys watch our shit, it doesn't matter. It could be on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, boom. Give us support. Jeff, we're about to end this episode. We're about an hour, 60, almost 60, an hour and a half in. Uh, any last things you want to say to the people before we go on to the next episode? Go Birds. Hey, the Raiders play uh, the Niners on New Year's Eve in Las Vegas. That might be a game we got to go to and just do a little vlog. That'd probably be a nice little game. So thank you guys for watching. We're out of here. I'm super drunk. Wish me luck. I'm going to go meet my fucking girlfriend's mom tonight. You got a job interview. <laughs> I'm going to put on my job interview. I'm you got literally a job gonna, interview shirt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear my job interview shirt. All right. We love you. Peace. It's a Lit Outlet podcast. Appreciate y'all. Let's go. Peace. Uh, every episode from now on, we're going to do a little uh, karaoke night by Def Jeff. So this last outro, even though I was super passionate about and I completely mean everything, I totally forgot this part. Jeff, can you Possibly. please sing to us in three Two, one, go. Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with. Would it be a sin if I can't help falling in love with you like a river flows? Surely to the sea, darling, so it goes, some things are meant to be, take my hand, take my whole life to can't help falling in love with you. Jesus.
Jesus Christ, that was beautiful. Drunk karaoke, baby.